You seem uncomfortable. Do I make you nervous, Corky? No. Thirsty, maybe. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Real Insights. Today we're diving deep into the world of captivating characters you just can't take your eyes off. Those enigmatic ladies who demand your attention and may even leave you with chills down your spine. That's right. We're talking about the irresistible and treacherous femme fatales. So grab your popcorn and get ready for a thrilling ride. First, let me define what is a femme fatale. A femme fatale is a character archetype characterized by beauty, mystique, allure, and a sense of peril. Typically, her role revolves around ensnaring a man in her intricate web of deception, ultimately leading to his downfall. At Tim's, she collaborates with the story's main antagonists, employing the hero to further their nefarious agendas. In certain instances, she grapples with inner conflicts, torn between her own feelings and the morally ambiguous actions she undertakes. Let's start the list at number 10 with Susie Toller, played by Denise Richards in the 1998 neo-noir thriller Wild Things. It is a twist-filled crime drama directed by John McNaughton, with Susie Toller as a key character who fits the femme fatale mold. She is introduced as a seemingly innocent high school student residing in the coastal town of Blue Bay, Florida. She initially comes across as the classic girl next door, with a charming smile and an affable demeanor. However, as the film's intricate plot unfolds, it becomes evident that Susie is not as she appears. Susie's striking physical beauty and charismatic presence are her standout qualities. These attributes make it nearly impossible for anyone she encounters to resist her allure. She exudes an aura of innocence that conceals her true nature. As the story unfolds, it becomes evident that she plays a central role in a web of deception and treachery. Her actions have profound and far-reaching consequences, leading to shocking revelations and twists. Throughout the film, Susie epitomizes the unpredictability and danger often associated with femme fatales in cinema. Don't let them. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. Susie, but... don't fall apart. Her ability to manipulate, deceive, and betray makes her a truly captivating and perilous character within the context of wild things. At number nine, Meredith Johnson, portrayed by Demi Moore, is a pivotal character in the film Disclosure. She is a high-powered executive working for a leading technology company. Meredith is a multifaceted character who embodies the complexities of power, ambition, and sexuality in a corporate setting. <coughs> Meredith is portrayed as an intelligent, ambitious, and highly capable professional. She has climbed the corporate ladder to reach a prominent position within the company. Her ambition drives her to succeed, even in a male-dominated industry. The central conflict of the film revolves around Meredith's accusation of sexual harassment against her former lover and current colleague, Tom Sanders, played by Michael Douglas. This accusation becomes a focal point of tension and drama, as it threatens to derail Tom's career and the company's reputation. Her skill in manipulation and her willingness to exploit her personal relationships make her a formidable adversary. She uses her charisma and cunning to control the narrative and the people around her. She blurs the lines between victim and perpetrator, leaving the audience to grapple with the ethical implications of her actions. Number 8. Catherine Murtoy, portrayed by Sarah Michelle Gellar, is a central character in Cruel Intentions. The film is a modern adaptation of Pierre Chauderlos de la Clos' 18th century novel Les Liaisons Dangereuses and is set in an upscale New York City high school. Catherine is the quintessential example of a manipulative and morally ambiguous femme fatale. Catherine is one of the most manipulative characters in the film. She thrives on scheming and orchestrating the downfall of others. Her cunning and ability to manipulate people's emotions and actions are central to the plot. A significant part of Catherine's manipulation involves her use of sexuality. She engages in a bet with her stepbrother, Sebastian, played by Ryan Philippe, to seduce and corrupt the innocent Annette, portrayed by Reese Witherspoon. This bet is at the heart of the film's intrigue. Her actions have severe emotional consequences for those around her, leading to heartbreak, betrayal, and ultimately, tragedy. Catherine Murtoy stands as a classic example of the femme fatale archetype. 
So that's what this is all about. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. She embodies the dangerous allure of a character who navigates a morally gray world of manipulation and betrayal. Her cunning and willingness to use her sexuality make her a memorable and formidable antagonist in Cruel Intentions. At number seven, Lynn Bracken, portrayed by Kim Basinger, is a central character in L.A. Confidential, a neo-noir crime thriller set in the 1950s Los Angeles. Lynn is a high-class prostitute working at a brothel known for providing women who resemble famous Hollywood actresses. She becomes intimately involved in the complex and corrupt world of the LAPD. Lynn's striking resemblance to the iconic actress Veronica Lake is her defining feature. This resemblance makes her highly sought after by clients who desire a taste of Hollywood glamour. Lynn becomes connected to two of the film's protagonists, Ed Exley, played by Guy Pearce, and Bud White, played by Russell Crowe. Her involvement with these characters deepens the film's intrigue and drama. Underneath her glamorous exterior, Lynn harbors vulnerability and complexity. Her past and her reasons for choosing her line of work are gradually revealed, adding depth to her character. Her character's unique position as a high-class prostitute with a hidden past makes her an integral part of the film's narrative and thematic exploration of illusion and reality. Kim Basinger's portrayal of Lynn earned her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, highlighting the impact and depth of this memorable character. There's blood on your shirt. Is that an integral part of your job? Yeah. Do you enjoy it? When they deserve it. Did they deserve it today? Number six, Lena Mathers, portrayed by Metchen Amick, is a central character in Dream Lover, a psychological thriller directed by Nicholas Kazan. The film revolves around the life of Ray Reardon, played by James Spader, a successful architect whose seemingly perfect marriage to Lena takes a dark and mysterious turn. Lena is introduced as a charismatic and enigmatic woman who quickly captures the heart of Ray Reardon. Her allure is undeniable, and she possesses an air of mystery that fascinates Ray and the audience. Lena's past is shrouded in secrecy, and as the film progresses, it becomes clear that she has hidden aspects of her history that are integral to the unfolding story. Her past is a source of intrigue and danger. Her relationship with Ray Reardon explores themes of obsession, desire, and suspense. Her character becomes a focal point for Ray's growing obsession and paranoia, driving the film's psychological tension. Lena's character adds an element of unpredictability to the story. Her actions and motives are not always clear keeping both the characters and the audience on their toes. Look, just because I'm halfway pretty, guys look in my eyes and think they know me. Like I'm their fantasy. I'm just a regular screwed up person. Her presence drives the film's narrative and themes, creating an atmosphere of suspense and intrigue. As her character's secrets are gradually revealed, the audience is drawn deeper into the psychological drama making Lena a pivotal and enigmatic figure in the story. At number five, we have Hedy Carlson as the central character in Single White Female, a psychological thriller directed by Barbet Schroeder. The film explores themes of identity, obsession, and the dark side of friendship. Jennifer Jason Lee delivers a compelling performance as Hedy, a character with layers of complexity. Hetty is initially introduced as a seemingly harmless and vulnerable woman who responds to an ad seeking a roommate. She presents herself as friendly, quiet, and eager to establish a connection with her new roommate, Allie Jones, portrayed by Bridget Fonda. As the story progresses, it becomes evident that Hetty possesses an obsessive personality. She quickly becomes infatuated with Allie, particularly her appearance and lifestyle. Hetty begins to imitate Allie's hairstyle, clothing, and even her mannerisms. Hetty's obsession with Allie takes a dark turn as she begins to manipulate and control various aspects of Allie's life. She isolates her from friends and loved ones, attempts to undermine her romantic relationship, and engages in increasingly disturbing behavior. Jennifer Jason Leigh's portrayal of Hetty Carlson in Single White Female is haunting and unforgettable. The character embodies the dark and dangerous potential of obsession taken to extremes. 
Hetty's transformation from a seemingly harmless roommate to a malevolent and homicidal figure is a testament to the film's exploration of the thin line between friendship and deadly fixation. I love myself like this. Are you a retard? No. Did you like looking at me? Number four, Peyton Flander. Portrayed by Rebecca de Mornay, is a central character in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, a psychological thriller directed by Curtis Hansen. Peyton is initially introduced as a charming and empathetic woman who applies for a position as a nanny in the Bartell family household. She presents herself as a trustworthy and nurturing caregiver, endearing herself to the family. Beneath her seemingly benevolent exterior, Peyton harbors a dark and vengeful agenda. Her true motive is to infiltrate the Bartell family and seek revenge against Mrs. Claire Bartell, played by Annabella Sciorra, for a perceived injustice in her past. Peyton's character excels in manipulation and deceit. She gains the trust of the Bartell family, ingratiates herself into their lives, and subtly begins to undermine Claire's position in the family by exploiting secrets and vulnerabilities. As the film progresses, Peyton's actions become increasingly threatening and dangerous. She orchestrates a series of disturbing events aimed at discrediting Claire, damaging her family, and ultimately achieving her revenge. And now we're down at our top three picks. In the third spot, we have Suzanne Stone Moretto, portrayed by Nicole Kidman. Hi, my name is Suzanne Moretto. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Suzanne Moretto is my married name. My own name is Suzanne Stone. That's my professional name. As the central character in To Die For, a dark comedy directed by Gus Van Sant. The film is a satirical exploration of ambition, fame, and the obsession with celebrity culture. Suzanne is a captivating and manipulative figure whose determination to achieve fame drives her to commit heinous acts. Suzanne is a woman with boundless ambition. She aspires to become a famous television anchor and is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve her goal. She possesses a charismatic and seductive personality that allows her to manipulate those around her. Suzanne's pursuit of fame leads her to manipulate her husband, Larry Moretto, played by Matt Dillon, and engage in an illicit affair with a high school student, Jimmy Emmett, played by Joaquin Phoenix. She carefully orchestrates her actions to further her career. The film is presented in a faux documentary style, with Suzanne often speaking directly to the camera as she recounts her story. This stylistic choice adds an element of detachment and self-absorption to her character. Nicole Kidman's portrayal of Suzanne adds depth and complexity to this dark comedy, earning her critical acclaim and solidifying Suzanne as one of the standout femme fatales of the 1990s. At number two, Senya Onatop, portrayed by Famke Janssen, is a femme fatale and primary antagonist in the James Bond film, Goldeneye. A former Soviet fighter pilot turned assassin, Zania is known for her deadly combination of beauty, physical prowess, and sadistic tendencies. Senya Onatop is aligned with Alec Trevelyan, Janus, the main antagonist of Goldeneye. Together, they plan to use a stolen satellite weapon to cause financial chaos. Zenya's role is not merely that of a henchwoman, she is a formidable adversary with her own agenda. Her unique modus operandi involves killing her victims by crushing them between her thighs during intimate encounters. One of Xenia's most dangerous qualities is her sadistic pleasure in violence. She exhibits a chilling enjoyment in killing, particularly during moments of physical confrontation. This sadistic aspect of her character makes her unpredictable and particularly menacing. Famke Janssen's portrayal of Xenia Onatop has left an enduring impact on Bond fans. Her iconic persona, characterized by a mix of sensuality and sadism, has solidified her as one of the memorable Bond villains. And the top pick for the best seductive and dangerous femme fatale of the 1990s, Catherine Trammell, portrayed by Sharon Stone, the central character in Basic Instinct, a neo-noir erotic thriller directed by Paul Verhoeven. The film explores themes of obsession, sexuality, and psychological manipulation. 
Catherine is a character who embodies seduction and danger in equal measure. She is introduced as a stunningly beautiful and highly intelligent novelist. What's your new book about? A detective. He falls for the wrong woman. Her charisma and allure are undeniable, drawing both the characters in the film and the audience under her spell. The central plot of the film revolves around allegations that Catherine may have committed a brutal murder. As the investigation unfolds, her involvement becomes increasingly enigmatic. One of the most iconic moments in cinematic history is the infamous police interrogation scene featuring Catherine Trammell. During this scene, Catherine is brought in for questioning, and she sits cross-legged in a revealing white dress. As she coolly and confidently answers questions, her provocative posture and the suggestive nature of her responses create a highly charged and suspenseful atmosphere. This scene has become legendary for its sensuality and psychological tension, making it one of the most pause-worthy moments in film history. Her mastery of seduction, manipulation, and psychological complexity make her the quintessential femme fatale of the 1990s, earning her a lasting place in cinematic lore. That wraps it up for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the suggestions and discovered a compelling femme fatal film to watch. If I overlooked any characters, or if you have top picks to recommend, feel free to share them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more film-related updates in your feed. Once again, real insights out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Like shooting tuna in a barrel. Ah!